If you've ever made your own Minecraft server, then at some point you had to decide which server software to use. Now this can be quite a hard decision to make, especially because nowadays there are so many different servers out there you can choose from. First you have to decide if you want to run plugins or mods, or maybe none of that. And let's say you choose plugins, then you will still have a dozen different softwares you can choose from. And with the market being flooded with high performance forks, as we call them, server softwares that all claim to deliver the absolute best performance for your server, it can be hard to figure out what to actually believe and also what the difference between certain server softwares is. So today, let's talk about it for a bit. Let's chat about server softwares, the different types that are out there and which one might be best for you to use depending on your needs. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Before you can truly choose a server software, you have to decide if you want to run plugins, mods, or neither of them. Now, let's say you want a server that can run mods. The logical next question is, what type of mods? Fabric, Forge, Neoforge, and Quilt are the four most popular mod loaders today. And each of these also allow you to make a server with their loader installed. Now, if you want to make a server and you want to run a bunch of mods, the only thing you really have to look at is what mods do I want to run, what platforms does it support, and then make the decision on which mod loader you're gonna use accordingly. There is not a whole lot more to it. Now if you decide you don't want to run mods, but instead you want to run plugins, you have a wide variety of server softwares to choose from. You can choose to opt for Spigot, you can also go for something like Paper, which is what most server owners do. You can also go for Purper, which is a paper fork that more and more people are switching to, and you can also go for a high performance fork like Leaf MC, which I made a video on a little while back. Now, what the difference is between all of these server softwares, I will get to that in a little bit. First, though, I want to talk about what you should use if you want to play pure vanilla Minecraft. Let's say you don't want to use plugins and you also don't want to use mods. You do not care at all. You simply want to play vanilla Minecraft. Then, what a lot of server owners do, they opt for a server software like Paper MC. But then they just don't install any plugins. And the reason people choose to go for Paper MC is because it is generally more optimized than a vanilla Minecraft server. And while this is a route you can take, and in theory it is true, Paper servers overall run better than vanilla servers, there is something very important to keep in mind here. An increase in performance doesn't come in free. It never does. To the people out there who like to make things like mob farms, have you ever noticed that on a public SMP, for example, some farms that work totally fine in single player Minecraft don't work on a multiplayer server? You might think this is because there is a big difference between single player and multiplayer, but there really isn't. The reason these farms don't work correctly anymore is because these servers have been quote unquote optimized. Things were changed in terms of chunk rendering and entity spawn and despawning and a lot more things you might not even realize and these things that are changed to optimize a server will also kind of break it in a way when vanilla values are changed the server might indeed be better optimized in the sense of it can now have more players before the TPS starts to drop but at the same time it will also compromise the experience for those players paper MC while I love this software so much does also compromise on on some vanilla features. And for those who love making farms in Minecraft, you've most likely noticed this a long, long time ago. Some things just don't work the same on paper servers as they do on vanilla servers. I've even experienced this myself. When I still had a Minecraft server called Soracraft, a friend of mine was building a very big witch farm. But after the whole design was done and everything was built, the witch farm simply didn't work. So we did a lot of research and eventually it turned out it was paper. It was some some settings in the paper config which are meant to optimize entity spawning that kept the witch farm from working. So we changed the settings in the paper config back to vanilla default and the farm immediately started working again. And this is why if you want to make a pure vanilla Minecraft server that gives you the full vanilla experience of the game, paper is simply not the right choice. And if you plan on just playing on a pure vanilla Minecraft server with a few friends for example, then a vanilla server works just fine. 
or something I see a lot of people do nowadays is make a fabric server, which is essentially a vanilla Minecraft server with a mod loader added to it. Fabric without any mods installed is basically vanilla Minecraft. And then what they do is install a no compromise optimization mod only on the server sites like lithium and then they just play and have a good time. And it's a very valid method of running a vanilla server. You won't have any of the compromises that come with paper. You can still optimize your server a little bit and other than that you can just play and have a fun time. Now let's say you do want to run plugins. You want a micro server and you want plugins, period. Then you have no choice but to opt for a server that supports them. There are a whole bunch of different server softwares out there that allow you to run plugins. So which one to go for? Spigot is of course the OG in this regard. I mean, it's not truly the OG. There's also buckets and craft buckets, but those are not actively maintained anymore. Spigot still is. These servers are still being made at the time of recording this video 1.21.7 has just released they updated their server straight away and for years now i've seen people wonder should i still use spigot or should i opt for paper and this is an easy decision to make you should opt for paper spigot in this current day and age is just very outdated not in terms of minecraft versions they support but in every single other aspect they just are while paper is constantly working on modernizing their software and utilizing new features that most ads to make their server even better, Spigot is basically just trying to make their old software work on new versions without changing all too much. I don't know if it is laziness or just lack of interest, but it seems like Spigot is really not trying to compete anymore. Their build tool has to be the perfect example of this. For those who don't know, if you want to get a Spigot server, you have to compile it yourself using the Spigot build tools. It is a tool that you need to download and then execute with something like git and apparently it also has a GUI now but you have to follow all the steps and then eventually on your own PC you will build a spigot jar file. Now the reason it works this way is because of Mojang's EULA. You are not allowed to distribute Mojang's code. The official Minecraft server software is of course Mojang's code and modded servers like spigot are of course built upon that vanilla software so they are not allowed to just give you the spigot server and distribute Mojang's code along the way. Which is why they came up with the build tools. Which is a giant hassle. Because you need to run a program on your PC every single time you want to build a new server. It just sucks. So you might be wondering, is there not a better way to do this? Well, yes. <laughs> There is. The way paper does it, for example. You might have noticed this before, but if you go to the paper website, you can simply download a server here by clicking on download. And it will immediately download. There it is. Does this then not break the Mojang EULA? No, it doesn't. Because as you may have noticed before, the first time you boot a new paper server, the first thing it does over here is download Mojang's code. So paper is not redistributing it. They are only giving you their code. And as soon as you run their code, it will download the additional code from Mojang to make the server software complete. This is a totally legit way of doing it. Could Spigot use this same effort? Yes, yes, they totally could, but they don't. And it is just one of many things that really shows that Spigot is no longer part of this server software competition. They just kind of release their stuff without updating all too much. And as long as it boots, it's fine. But if you want to run a server that can use plugins, I would definitely definitely not recommend Spigot. Paper nowadays is kind of the default option to go for. They originally were a fork of Spigot, but a while back they became a hard fork, which allows them to kind of do their own thing. And this has had a really positive effect, as I believe for Minecraft version 1.21.6 or 1.21.7, the paper server was released even before Spigot released theirs. That is something that was never possible before. Everyone always had to wait for Spigot to do their thing. Now that's just no longer the case and it's great paper is still a very good and solid option paper also tries to greatly improve performance and it is never without compromise 
Now, I do have to say, compared to some of these high-performance server softwares, the compromise is not that bad. It is definitely there. And for a lot of players, it will be noticeable. But it's definitely not as noticeable as on some of the other ones. Now, like I mentioned earlier, Purper is also a server software that's becoming more and more popular as time goes on. And in the video I made about LeaveMC, I even claimed that the performance of Purper is better than the performance of a paper server. Now, while this was kind of the case before, it no longer really is. For a little while, Purple was a pufferfish fork. Pufferfish being another server software. And even after they decided to no longer fork Pufferfish, they still included some of Pufferfish's patches, which did give a slight performance increase. But you have trouble, who is one of Purple's developers, has corrected me on this, and those Pufferfish patches are no longer included in the Purple server software. Which means that currently the biggest strength of Purple is customization. Like mentioned here, Purple is a server software based on paper, and Purple focuses on providing as much configurability as possible. If there are certain things in your server you want to tweak or customize, and paper doesn't allow you to do that, then Purper most likely will. The Purper config file has so many configuration options, you can tweak the server to your heart's content. Which, for people who know what they're doing, can be really nice and a good reason to use Purper. But if you don't plan on touching any of Purple's configs, there's also not really a reason to use it over paper. Now then, we finally arrive at high-performance forks. The one which has been gaining a lot of popularity as of late is LeaveMC. Like I mentioned before, I recently made a video on this, and that video was mostly to figure out why so many people are switching to it. Even though this software has been around for a few years, I never heard about it until about one and a half months ago. And ever since then, I've seen more and more people just switch to it. I was really wondering why, so that's why I made that video, where I try to figure out what is so special about this software. And like it says over here, Leaf is a high-performance Minecraft server software. High performance, that's the keyword here. And you have trouble, the Purple developer, said this really well, most optimization magic has already happened. Optimization never comes without compromises. This also holds true for paper. But paper is still a very usable software. And while some things, like a few farms, may not work well anymore, the overall experience for your players is still fine. There are no game-breaking things that just happen. But when you start optimizing even more, then at some point, things just kind of start to break. In the video I made about LeafMC, I complained about there being so many different config files. Leaf has a purple config, a paper config, a gill MC config, then a leaf MC config. There's also a spigot and a bucket config. And I was already wondering why is that? Well, it turns out leaf MC just grabs a bunch of different patches from all over the place and slaps them onto their own server software. They basically look around at all of the other server softwares out there, grab patches all across the board that optimize stuff, because of course all of these server softwares are open source, they have to be, and then they just integrate them into Leaf, or any other high performance fork for that matter. An example you have trouble really likes to tell me about is Utopia MC. This was also a high performance fork for Minecraft, and what they did was basically just include a whole bunch of patches from all across across the board and slap them onto their own server software. And you might wonder what was the result of that. Well, things started breaking. Now, good to mention is that things might not break straight away. At first, it might really seem like these high optimization forks optimize your server even more, way beyond what paper can do. And in a lot of cases, they do really optimize your server a bit more. If you just test with, let's say, 20 players and you swap out paper for, let's say, leaf, you will most likely notice a difference when it comes to performance. But over time, you might start to notice that uh, a lot of things are just kind of broken. This is a video which you have trouble sent me, but this was on a Utopia server. As you can see that the world is literally falling apart. <laughs> Chunks are just straight up disappearing. And it turns out the main reason why this was happening is because the people behind Utopia were just slapping a bunch of patches together without really understanding what they would do. And that just broke everything. Now maybe we can laugh about Chunks just disappearing, but in some cases it can permanently 
permanently corrupt your world just by installing the wrong server software. Here we got an article written by Kenny TV, the lead developer at Paper MC, and this whole article is about why Utopia, which has been discontinued now, is not the most powerful and feature-rich Minecraft server out there. And you might think, oh, of course, Kenny is gonna write an article like this. He just wants you to use paper. But if you actually read through this article, you will find a whole bunch of evidence. And I, I mean a whole bunch of it, which shows that the people behind Utopia just didn't really know what they were doing. And according to a lot of developers I've spoken to over the past week, as a result of that Leave MC video I made, the situation at Leave MC is not much better. Not just Leave MC. I want to make this very clear. This is not just about Leave MC. This is about a lot of these so-called high-performance forks. In a lot of cases, it might seem like they do actually optimize your server more, and your server might actually run a bit more efficient at the start, but at some point, things can just start breaking. And like mentioned in Kenny TV's article, there there was a constant influx of non-trivial issues. They were not properly reviewing pull requests. They were not putting enough thought into patches that they pull. And that can all have a serious consequence on your server. Because you might be using one of these high performance forks. And everything might run perfectly well for you. But as they are constantly adding new optimization patches. It could someday be that you just update your server. And bam. Your world is corrupted. Or the chunks in your world will break. In that instance it can just randomly happen and that is obviously not something that you want now of course i'm just a youtuber i'm not here to tell you what you should and should not do do whatever you please but i do hope this video gave you a bit more insight on all of these server softwares what they do what they can be used for and also the risks of these high performance forks and hopefully it will make the choice of which server software you're gonna use a bit easier and with that being said that's gonna be it for today do make sure to subscribe to my channel Join my Discord. Thank you so much, channel members. And then I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye.